Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Module 2, and this will be in the third week of the semester, and we're looking at the value of sustainability reporting. And what I want to take you through in this module is just show you what is the nature of the reporting, extent of reporting by companies around the world, focusing on a KPMG report, and then we're going to finally talk about what are the reasons why companies are engaging in this reporting? So they're the two big things. What is the current situation? And what are the big dominant reasons for why companies are choosing to report their sustainability footprint? Let's get into it, shall we? Ah, so what is meant by value? Well, when we talk about value, we're talking about measurement of financial benefit, the treatment of actions that bring indirect financial benefit to the company and also a cost benefit analysis. Now, for me, management accounting is my background. I really are really big on not just the cost and benefit analysis, but also the more so the actions that bring about indirect financial benefit. It's the actions that result in value in the future, in one year, two year, three year, five years time. And it's this creation of value over time that is not always captured by financial reports. And that is largely the non-financial reporting information. We're going to learn a lot about this this semester. Anyway, so let's have a look at this uh, KPMG report 2022. And really what they did is that they surveyed 4,900 companies around the world. That is the N100. That is the top 100 companies of 49 countries around the world. Wow. And they looked at, okay, to what extent are these companies disclosing their sustainability footprint? To what extent are they disclosing their various initiatives they have in place? And there are a lot of acronyms that you're going to learn this semester. And one I want to introduce to you with this report is the GRI, and that's the Global Reporting Initiative. Then there's the TCFD, that's Task Force for Financial Disclosure. And in the yellow part just above here, right here, and that is a global initiative established by the Financial Sustainability Board in 2015. Its purpose is to develop a framework that helps companies and organizations disclose climate-related financial information to investors, lenders, insurers, and other stakeholders. So we're, we're trying to promote transparency. We're trying to improve the understanding of climate-related risks and opportunities across various sectors. And ultimately, we really want to have harmonization in how companies do report, and we'll get into that in this semester. So what is interesting about that report in that summary, 96% of these G250 companies, that is the top 250 companies globally, report on sustainability or ESG matters. ESG, that is the environment, social and governance. 64% of these global 250 acknowledge climate change as a risk to their business. Interestingly, biodiversity, less than half companies are half the companies are reporting on biodiversity, which is an extended version of the carbon footprint. It's actually really finding out whether the company understands its sis, how it integrates into the environmental system, and more about that as we go through this semester. But just want to let you know this summary here is that the companies are reporting. All right. And what you're going what I'm going to show you in the slides to come is that not all companies from all the countries are reporting to the same extent. Ah, so let's have a look at this, shall we? All right. So based on this 2022 survey, there are five big takeaways. That is sustainability reporting is growing. It, there is increased reporting on climate-related risks, glowing growing awareness of biodiversity risk. Now that's, you know, as I said in my last slide, that is a another dimension, a much more tricky dimension of reporting that a lot of companies still have yet to understand. Number four, the UN SDG, that is the Sustainability Disclosure Groups reporting prioritizes quantity over quality. 
and climate risk reporting leads social and governance risk when we talk about ESG. ESG is a big thing now for the last five years, but it's the E in the ESG that is tending to dominate a lot of this disclosure that is going on. Ah, wow. So let's have a look at some of these graphs of reporting. Notice it looks like, wow, we're in a good place in 2022 because companies are reporting the G250, 96%, yes. Yeah. And then the N100 on average, 79%. We think, wow, we're home and hose. We don't need to learn any more because everyone is reporting, everyone knows what to do, and the world is safe. Well, that is not the case, all right? In this semester, we're going to delve into the different areas of reporting, and all is not safe and sound as it seems when it comes to reporting and full disclosure of the environmental footprint of organizations around the world. Ah, wow. So let's have a look at across different countries. Notice that Asia Pacific is kind of matching Europe and the Americas. And that is really interesting because they have actually come a long way, especially in the last one or two years. Ah, however, Middle East and Africa, well, Middle East, very fossil fuel dependent, are not so enamored with the idea of we need to disclose our environmental footprint, all right? Or Africa, much less developed. You can imagine they have a lot more challenges to undertake before they can get where other country companies are at. Ah, wow. All right. So what else can we learn here? North America, Western Europe, they're in a good place. They're doing a lot of reporting. Latin America, still a lot to learn. Eastern Europe, still a lot to learn. Wow. All right. Now, if we look at specific countries, you can see that Canada, Finland, France, you can see these are leading countries. And even Malaysia is leading. South Korea is doing well in terms of countries in Asian region. So it looks like this report is showing a very positive spin on climate related, related disclosure reporting. Ah, wow. So let's have a look at the M100 and the N250. Notice that the N250, they've slacked off in 2022. Maybe it's COVID, maybe it's something else. I don't know. But there's a decrease of 8% points, they are still learning, whereas the N100, they seem to be at a stable place. They're 60%, 58%, 60% reporting over 2017, 2020, 2022, respectively. It doesn't seem like there's any movement. I just want you to realize that when you have graphs like this, they don't always tell the full story because they're highly aggregated, all right? These are percentages of in the case of N100, that represent 3,475 countries, companies. What we want to do is delve deeper, pull it apart by country, pull it apart by sector to find out where are the leading country, companies coming from. And then we can learn from them if we want to benchmark against them, if we want to improve our sustainability reporting. Ah, wow. All right. So, as I said earlier, Asia Pacific is doing very, very well. Middle East and Africa still struggling. And, but, you know, this is just the N100 of all the developing areas, the Americas, Latin America, and Europe. Now, what we're talking about now is integrated reporting. And this is a much, this is a different benchmark again. The graphs on the previous slide, we're talking about just are you disclosing, for the most part, they may be disclosing in a separate sustainability reporting document, separate from the annual report, whereas integrated disclosure is that you include in the annual report a section on the sustainability, a section on ESG, and that companies are not there yet. Ah, all right. So, just a big takeaway is from the graphs I've showed you already. Yes, they are disclosing a lot, but they're disclosing in separate reports. They may be disclosing the sustainability footprint online, but not in an annual report. And the annual report, the profit and loss of balance sheet and cash flows, 
are separate. Ah, but when it comes to integrating them together into one integrated report, you can see the numbers are telling a different story. The numbers are saying that the companies are not there yet. Ah, wow. All right. So let's get on to GRI standards. That's the Global Reporting Initiative. And that tends to be the most popular standard that is used by companies and countries around the world. And so we're going to learn more about that in module four of this unit. Stay tuned for that. Ah. All right, and see and see from the global reporting initiative standards, you can see the uptake among the N100, the uptake among the global 250 is relatively high. Okay, so obviously the GRI is actually leading the pack in terms of the standards we should be following with respect to environmental disclosure, with respect to carbon footprint disclosure. Ah, wow. All right, so. Back to the M100 on GRI reporting, noting, noting that the Americas, Asia Pacific are leading the field here. Less so, maybe equally Europe, but remember Europe, there's a lot of developed countries in Europe, so they should be matching or doing better than the Asia Pacific, but Asia Pacific is doing very, very well. Middle East and Africa, as I said earlier, they are still getting to grips with it. Middle East, not so motivated because they are fossil fuel land and Africa very much in a developing state. Ah, assurance rates double among the G250 countries for the Chinese G250 companies and the assurance rate for the M100 is increasing slightly over time as well. What do we mean by assurance? Okay, there's one thing to disclose something. There's number two is to get assurance by a third party and maybe a big four auditor. Yeah, make more money for the big four auditor. Yes, and they come in and then provide assurance that your disclosure is reasonable and it actually makes sense and there's evidence behind that disclosure. It's not necessarily a true and fair view as we talk about for the profit and loss and balance sheet, but we're just, it's a basic assurance that the disclosure seems to be complete and adequate for what the company has in place. Ah, so again, like I said earlier, if we're going to do integrated reporting, companies are not there yet. If we're going to have assurance of our disclosures, companies are a little bit further down the track, but then assurance rates are not matching the disclosure rates as we speak. Ah, so let's keep in mind, there is the integrated reporting, there is getting assurance, and then there is basic disclosure. So the basic disclosure is leading the pack. Then there's assurance of the basic disclosure that is starting to happen more frequently. And then there's the integrated reporting, which is lagging behind and needs to catch up in years to come. Ah, Wow. All right. So the, let's have a look at the second part I wanted to take you through, and that is the benefits of sustainability reporting. I've just showed you some of the patterns of countries, of companies around the world. Now let's have a look at the benefits. Why should you report your sustainable footprint? Why should you report your carbon footprint? Ah, well, better reputation, meeting expectations of employees, and this is very much like an e this is more like an employee value proposition that is EVP. And that's a big human resources concept. That is, if you are seen to be really environmentally friendly, you have integrated reporting, you have assurance, and you are disclosing, employees may feel a greater sense of alignment with working for you. And then you may not need to pay them higher wages for them to stay with you. They may not leave if someone from a less reputable sustainable disclosure company offers them 20% more wage because they want to stay because their values align with the company's values. Number two, improved access to capital. Ah, yes, lenders are increasingly looking out for 
information, not of your profit and loss balance sheet and cash flows, but also your sustainable footprint. What initiatives do you have in place? Do you have assurance of those initiatives? Do you have, have you got third party assurance of your sustainable disclosures? These are all things that lenders are increasingly taking into account. Ah, overall, yes, you still might get a loan, but if you are disclosing and you have assurance and maybe it's integrated in your reporting, it's likely you can get a much cheaper loan rate from the lenders. And that's a big plus. Wow. All right. What else? Increased efficiency and waste reduction. Now we're getting into operational mode. If we look operationally and we start to pay attention to sustainability initiatives, it may be using it less electricity, less water. It may be improving the processes in the organization. It may be reducing inventory. It may be training the people so they can be more productive. These are all things that can add to increased efficiency and waste reduction. Ah, Number four, monitoring long-term risk and improving long-term risk management by actually forcing your company to think about the broader perspective beyond the profit loss, beyond the balance sheet, beyond the cash flow, and look further of how much electricity are we using, how much water are we using. This may help curtail any risks that may come over in the long term, and it may help you manage risk in the long term. It may help you to upgrade your operations sooner than later, and that benefits you in the long term because you're in a better place in the future. Ah, wow. All right. What else? In increased consumer loyalty. Number five, all right? Increased consumer loyalty. If they know that you have are uh, disclosing, if they know that you are getting assurance, if they know that it's integrated reporting, consumers might see you as a leader of the values that they aspire to. And if with that values alignment with the consumer, the values alignment go with your product and then consumers may buy your product over other products, even if it's the same price or even if it's priced at a higher level than the competition. Number six, employer loyalty and recruitment. Getting back to the first point, all right, this is really the EVP, the uh, employee value proposition. You get employees, their values aligned with your sustainability footprint disclosures and assurance. Employees are going to stay around even if they're offered more money to go to a their competition. Ah, wow. Are there any other benefits? Well, there's lots of other benefits. Improved relationships with regulatory bodies because there's a lots of regulation coming down the pipeline from EU, from the SEC in the US. It helps the organization to take measures to increase long-term profitability. I talked about that. It helps the organization reflect on its strategy. And we're going to be talking about that second half of this unit. Preferred insurance rates, not just preferred lending rates, but preferred insurance rates, insurance companies are going to give you the benefit. And then there's going to be other social benefits that I haven't even mentioned. Ah, wow. So there's lots of benefits that we can talk about that comes from disclosing, getting assurance, and then even going to the nth degree of integrating your disclosures in the financial reports. And here are some of the other issues, same words, but the same five issues, okay? You're looking after the employees, you're looking after the consumers, you're attracting consumers, you're actually being more profitable for the long term, you're managing long term risks, you're actually fitting in with regulatory bodies, with new compliance arrangements that are coming down track and also you're getting better lending rates from lenders because they see you as thinking about broader than your profit and loss your balance sheet and cash flow statements ah all right so there's the internal benefits there's external benefits there's different ways and i'll just 
remind you and reiterate a few issues on the internal benefits. I'm really big on that because I have a management accounting background, and that is emphasizing the link between financial and non-financial performance, because the non-financial performance that is going to set your company up for the future. Influencing long-term management strategy, policy and business plans, and streamlining processes, reducing costs and improving efficiency. These are all good things that are are going to put your company into a better place in the future. And your financial statements are not always going to be totally reflective of that. Ah, And of course, the external benefits that I've talked about, reputation, brand awareness, external stakeholders, cheaper investment, credit ratings, et cetera. Lots of great benefits that can be had by reporting. So if that's the real benefits theoretically by actually disclosing, getting assurance and integrating your sustainability footprint, your environmental footprint, your carbon footprint, then are companies taking heed and doing it? Well, yes and no. And here is an old graph. It's 2013. But just note, transparency of stakeholders was a big thing back then. Competitive advantage was a big thing back then. What about today? The same trends and issues are there today. And I refer to you an EY Europe report 2023. They talk about the same issues that are relevant today. So comparing 2013, which is on the far left side with 2022 above me, you can see that Transparency of the stakeholders was important, 2013. Competitive advantage was next important thing in 2013. And you can see today that carbon competition is very important. Carbon regulation, so it's all about compliance, is very big in 2022. Compliance may not have been as big back in 2013, but it's much, much bigger in 2022-23. Consumer demand is much bigger in 2022 and access to funding. There's two, there should be two C's in that access there. And this was copied from a consulting report. Yes, consultants still make mistakes even in 2023. There you go. Ah, So before we get on to module three, let's just have a, a recap. I've given you lots and lots of graphs to show you, okay, companies are disclosing, but not all companies are getting assurance from a third party of their disclosure. And much less companies are integrating their disclosures of the sustainability environmental footprint in their annual reports. You've got those three levels. Great. Then in the second half of this slide deck, we looked at, well, why should you disclose? Why should you get assurance? Why should you integrate? Well, the reasons were to keep your employees. Consumers love you, all right? Uh, lenders will love you. The regulatory bodies will love you. Insurance companies will love you. And But most important of all these stakeholders is your own strategy. It's so beneficial for your own strategy to create a vision for your sustainability and operational efficiency and profitability two years, three years, five years, six years down the track. Ah, wow. An exciting unit. Welcome aboard again in this second module. Next week, we're going to look at module three, where we're going to look at theories that try to describe the behavior that we see. I told you why we should be reporting. These theories basically help to conceptualize these reasons for reporting. And we're going to look at that in module three. So this is O'Connor. Thank you for being excited and wanting to learn as much as you can about the contemporary issues in sustainability in accounting. See you in the next lesson. Bye for now.